we managed, didn't we? Even amid today's relative abundance, it's still important to manage our diet and enjoy it. Thank you. Today's young children know nothing of meat rationing. And why should they? But they know what they like. When you're young, the aromas, the colors, the textures of food are music to the senses. As we grow, so does our food intake and we become more selective about what we eat. We also learn that food and sociability go hand in hand. Okay, looking this way, Alan, Sarah. All special events in our lives are opportunities to share and enjoy food with others. Food is an important focus for family life. <laughs> and when our children have grown, the pleasure of food remains a pleasure to be shared. What point then, in our golden year, in losing our interest in eating, the very stage of our lives when we can afford the time to savor the pleasure of food to the full. Those who keep up that interest know the eternal truth of an old French saying. You never grow old at the table. Vivian Burgess is 74 and still leads a busy life as an actress. She's always taken care with what she eats, and as she explains, in later life, she feels this is more important than ever. Food is a major pleasure and importance in one's life, and as you become elderly, it's more necessary than ever, because it's so easy to say, well, take shortcuts, and perhaps have tea and toast, or tea and a sandwich or perhaps convenience foods, which are very expensive anyhow, and not as nutritious. I think having a balanced diet makes all the difference in the world to your energy, to your outlook on life, and to your, your general health. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice to see everybody here this morning. Even if we look more carefully at what we eat, it may not be obvious exactly what to do. Nowadays, we're bombarded with information from all sides. Much of it may seem confusing and conflicting. Doctor's order number nine. So what are the doctor's orders? What do the experts say? A balanced diet for older people is really just the same as a balanced diet for younger people. It means a wide variety of nourishing foods because all the nutrients you need are spread through a very wide variety of foods. But there's one possibility that if, as you get older, you get less active, then you might need fewer calories. You're not going to want to eat so much. So if you've got fewer calories, you still need the same amounts of minerals and vitamins, and so you've got to be very careful to pack in the nourishment. Six and five, OAP. So, what should we OAPs eat? to pack in the nourishment. 208, 28. Of course, it's difficult to generalize about eating. Just as people differ, so do their tastes. Yes, I think I like uh, lamb stew more than anything else. Well, I enjoy my egg and bacon of the morning. Baked potatoes. Curry, rice, a little bit of steak or a chop. Bacon sandwich. I like fish and chips. Really, I, uh, I like those things. So in order to have a balanced diet, do we have to give up the things we enjoy? I had a letter some time ago from a lady who wrote to me and said, my husband is having egg and chips and fried bread and bacon for his breakfast, and he's always had it, and I don't think he should be having it any longer. And he's 84. Now look, that man, if he's 84, if a high fat was going to uh, be bad for him, it would have killed him years ago. He is a survivor. He survived on a high-fat diet, and it would be ridiculous to change. 
We may strive for a balanced diet, but achieving it's a different matter. In our later years, there can be obstacles. And the first is the dreaded shopping. I love going out shopping. I try to do it every day. A, because it's the exercise. It makes you work up an appetite for a meal. And one meets people. Also, I don't have to bring an enormous amount of shopping if I do it every day. I don't normally buy convenience foods, but there are occasions when perhaps I know I'm not going to be able to get out for a few days, then I do. But I'd rather get fresh if it's available. I use a sunflower margarine to spread on my bread. It's high in polyunsaturated, and it doesn't have all those animal fats. One convenience food I do find very useful are these ready-mixed uh, sauces. It saves so much time chopping and whisking, and the results are splendid. I begin the day always with perhaps a bowl of porridge. It's a great mistake to fill yourself up with tea and then go out to do your shopping straight Every day, I, I drink a certain amount of either Ribena or orange juice. I think it's a very dangerous age when you get elderly that your natural thirst seems to disappear a little, and you have to nurse it along. Quite often, a lot of people don't realize you can lose your sense of thirst as you get older. Now, we were doing a survey some time ago on people at retirement age. Before they retired, when they were at work, they had tea and coffee breaks. After they'd retired, if they didn't have this sort of, mm, I'm thirsty, they would forget to do this. And if you dehydrate, you can very often get confusional states. You can get headachy, you can get irritable. It's very important to keep up the fluid intake. The problem of managing your diet in old age is often more acute for men. Harry Littlewood was left on his own a few years ago and in his early 60s had to learn how to shop and cook for himself. And a pound of gold in the middle. French, sir? Yes, please. Should I wait for? Yep. Well, when I was first on my own and by myself, I used to find shopping very, very boring. I used to like to get it over as quickly as possible, grab something and out. But as time went by, I became to be you know, a little more choosy, more selective. And I kind of read things which were on packets and realized, you know, the, the vitamins and things like that. I also noticed fruit and vegetables, which were very essential. I go kind of every day because I think sometimes when you're when you by yourself, you have a bit more time than you used to have. Thanks a lot. Cheers, me, I'll target. a kind of little outing in a strange sort of way. You know, it's only an outing to the high street, but it's becomes, it becomes part of your life. Of course, supermarkets are very useful, but I do find that the small trader, particularly with things like vegetables, you get them fresh there, and you get individual attention. And I find if you want half a cabbage, of whatever quantity, they're always very happy to oblige. I do enjoy shopping at our family butcher. For one thing, he gives you all his undivided attention. For instance, I'm very fond of liver, and he will cut two or three very thin slices. I can cook it so beautifully. Hello. I'm particularly fond of fish. And down at our local fish market, they will take such trouble. They'll skin and clean the smallest quantity of fish for you. You know, when I started this work 20 years ago, there were very few small packs of foods in the, in the shops. And now, because there are so many more old people shopping for one, the supermarkets have got alive to it. We're a profitable market, and you'll find a lot of small pack foods on the shelves. 
Despite the convenience of modern cooking, many older people cannot be bothered to cook for themselves. One obstacle may be a lack of ideas about what to cook, but not the habit. Yes, I think it's very important that you take an interest in food, not just for the sake of food, but for the sake of, well, you know, socializing. It becomes a nice little thing to do, and receive food from other people. Also, it's, uh, it's a way of life, and it helps you along. Well, tonight I'm going to have a meal with a friend of mine, and uh, actually she's doing the main course, and I'm doing the dessert, which is apple pie. It's quite a favorite of mine, but it's so simple to do. You make the pastry, stew the apples, put it in there, cover it, bake it. But at the same time, I thought, well, why waste the oven? I'm going to do myself a little lunch for today, which is a very nice, tasty little snack. It's quite simple. You make a sandwich of cheese or meat and put tomato on it and cut it into four portions, stick it in a baking dish and pour over it uh, egg and milk, which bakes. And that's quite economical for, from the point of view of the oven. Bung that in at the same time and it's a very, very tasty little dish which is being done with my apple pie. With the growing number of older people and single-person households, there are many more recipe books catering for their needs. Tasty, nutritious, yet simple dishes for one or two. Vivian arrives home from the shopping. A chore she's made easier by planning it properly. also knows that one of the keys to enjoying your food in later years is sharing it with others. I enjoy cooking, particularly when I'm cooking for other people. For example, tonight I've got an old friend coming to dinner and I bought two marvellous cutlets of cod and I shall serve it with a, a parsley sauce. Also, with the cod, I am serving new potatoes and spinach, lots of iron in spinach, and vichy carrots. I'm sure he's going to enjoy it. It's very important not to lose one's enjoyment in food. And one of the ways of uh, savouring food and meals even more is to share it with friends. Also, it's more economical. I sometimes have a, you know, a couple of people to suffer because I've only got a small flat and uh, at first I was kind of afraid of all this. I thought, oh my God, you know, preparing meals in a tiny place. But actually, it, it, it's quite easy if you, if you get it all together. I mean, I do little dishes like a, like a shepherd's pie, which is uh, very simple. You know, you get your mince and you, you, you heat your mince and you chop an onion, you boil an onion and a carrot. You put that in a dish and you, you, you boil some potatoes, mash them, put them on top and grill them. And that's a very nice sort of supper dish. Another obstacle to proper eating may be a physical one. Vivian is enjoying preparing the fruits of her shopping expedition. But what if she were ill and couldn't get out? One of the reasons we found for malnutrition in old people who couldn't get out was that they didn't have anything in the house. They had no emergency store of food. Well, if they couldn't get out or somebody couldn't get in to feed them, how could they eat? And so it's very important to have a, a food store cupboard for non-perishables, things that you like. Of course, if you've got a, a fridge or a freezer, you can go for the perishables as well and have things like frozen vegetables. They're nourishing. They, they are picked and they're, and they're frozen within moments and people who say if they lost their vitamin C, I can tell them no, they're very good. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wendy Bagnall and I'm from the Home Service Department of British Gas. I'm very pleased to have been invited... Fuel costs might also be a worry, but British Gas reckon it needn't be as pricey as people imagine. A nationwide team of Home Service Advisors dispense plenty of sage advice on such matters at talks like these. Adapters. How many of you actually use gas? Oh, good. Well, on Gas Mark 2, you can have 35 hours for just one therm of gas. Perhaps equivalent to buying a small loaf of bread. And you can cook 10 stews for that amount of money. So it is a very There's practical help, too, for those of us whose fingers aren't as nimble as they were. For a gas cooker, we have a range of four special tap adapters. Cat A, as you can see, is a large, chunky handle, ideal for anyone who suffers from arthritis. Cat B, 
has got a large blade up the center. Ideal for anybody who's got a weakness of the arm or hand, because instead of using the fingers to turn, they put the palm of the hand against the blade and use the whole strength of the body to push and turn against the control. Tap C, a different design again, with three projections from around the side. And what about safety? Wendy Bagnall's advice is that just as the doctor helps keep us fit, so gas appliances should be serviced regularly by the professional. Can you smell, think you smell gas? It's important that you know... It's not much to ask, she thinks, for peace of mind. along with me this afternoon a poster of some do's and don'ts. For example, one of the first things that you would not do would be to smoke. So you must cut out any cigarettes or naked lights. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd just like to go through today's menu with you before but we get... But what if you arrive at old age and you can't cook? Help, especially for us helpless men, is at hand in the form of cookery classes for senior citizens, often run by the local authority. Maybe one near you. What are the alternatives? Eels on wheels? Lying on friends and relatives? All very fine. They make us more dependent. Most of us want to retain our independence. And besides, learning to cook can be rather fun. Well, it passes the time as much as anything, I think. And uh, there's a sense of achievement at the end, and one feels more satisfied if one has actually prepared the meal. I really rather enjoy it. You also you meet people here, too. The reason I come is I've been a, a widower for 17 years. Naturally, I had to cook for myself. Entering retirement need not be the signal for losing the enjoyment of food. In fact, it may be the start of a whole new lease on our eating lives. Not that we older folk are entirely devoid of sense when it comes to eating. Life has taught us a thing or two. It's really just a gentle reminder that most of us need. The rules are simple. Common sense is our guide, as Louise Davis explained. You know, nowadays there's a confusion of a lot of choice of foods. There's a confusion of a lot of rules. And some of those rules are really over-restrictive. There are only three rules that I make when you're eating as you're getting older, and that is eat something of everything, not too much of any one thing. In other words, don't get in a rut and have a wide variety. There's no food you must have. If you don't believe people, if you say you've got to have this, if you don't like it, then substitute something else that you do like. And then the third rule is that some foods are better for you than others. And I'm thinking now of the non-nutritious convenience foods, which might spoil your appetite and so just keep a nice wide diet and enjoy your food oh i say that looks really delicious don't you if there is one golden rule in managing our diet in old age surely it is to enjoy it and one of the most satisfying ways to enjoy food is to enjoy it with others at home or anywhere mm. you can pay me If you eat what you enjoy and enjoy what you eat, then you cannot go far wrong as long as your diet has variety and balance. And at the table at least, you can be sure you'll never grow old. Yes. And yours, Harry.